Hey, hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. So, we are continuing our journey on the best tech tree tanks in the tiers. This time we're at tier 7, and no, it's not the Annihilator. Obviously, it's not a tech tree tank. We are going to start with the light tanks and work our way through, and the best light tank, which kind of took me by surprise, sort of, is not what you may think. So taking the top spot was actually a little light tank that surprised me. I thought it would have been something along the lines of the LTTB or even the M4 Walker Bulldog, but no, it is this one, the LTG, the USSR light tank. It has 110 battles, qualifying battles that is, with a 52.49% win rate. Now contrast that with the LTTB, which has 923 qualifying battles, but only a 51.31% win rate. This one has a damage per battle of average 915, compare that to the LTG, which only has 862. But what's this tank like to play? So here we are rolling out in the little LTG. Now on paper, this is not the best light tank in the tier. I mean, there are better light tanks on paper. Think of the M41 Bulldog. I mean, the DPM on this thing is 2,375. By far, not the best. Its penetration is 144 mil. By far, not the best. Its alpha damage is 200. Pretty good, but not the best. But its rate of fire is 11.8 seconds. Again, not the best. Its shell velocity, 950. Not the best. So what is it that makes this tank? Well, it's got a pretty decent aim time, 1.9 seconds. It's got only five degrees of gun depression. Again, that's pretty pants, isn't it? And it's only got 63 kilometers going forwards. So what makes this tank so good? Well, a couple of things. Firstly, it's very small and very squat. Not only that, it has the best camo profile for any of the tier seven light tanks. And that makes a huge difference. You don't really need more than five degrees of gun depression, as you're seeing here. You can throw this tank around the map. You can put it into some really cool spots on a map, and the enemy are going to struggle to contain you. It's that straightforward. And with its speed and its small amount of profile, you are able to effectively get out of danger quite a lot, quite easier than you are in tanks such as the LTTB, which is much faster. But being much faster, doesn't necessarily mean it's a better tank because it's much taller it's much bigger this thing is crazily small and that's why i like it not only that i find this tank the most noob friendly of all the light tanks in tier 7. now you've got the likes of the sp1c and you've got the walker bulldog etc etc these tanks are notoriously difficult to play they are unforgiving they don't have great armor they don't have you know, they're, they're quite big, they're, quite, they're, they're not as nimble as this thing, and you can't really hide them on the maps like you can this tank. So when it comes to being noob-friendly, this tank is a lot easier to get on with than those other tanks. So if you're just introducing yourself to light tanks as you're moving up the tiers, you can't really go wrong with this one. It's a beautiful little tank. And, you know, it was quite nice for me to dust it off and roll out and have a bit of a good time in it. Admittedly, I'm not going to be setting the world on fire. That's not the point of these videos. The point of these videos is to showcase to you the good parts of the tanks. Now, I've already knocked out 1,856. I've already taken a kill. And this is a tier 8 game in real terms. We were up tiered, so we're bottom tier here. And I feel sorry for the SU. He, uh, he gets a good shot in, but unfortunately wasn't to be. And the little LTG, no problems taking him out. So now we've done over 2k damage. Don't forget, this is tier 7. 2k damage, taken two kills. We've got an SU 152 and a GC left to go. And with the mobility and the profile of this tank, they should not be that difficult to contend with. So this is why I like the tank. You can really throw it around. You can really have a lot of good fun in this tank. And I like that. I like the fact that, you know, you can be introduced to these light tanks and have a good time whilst doing it. It is forgiving. However, you you know, you can go wrong. So at the end of the day, look, we take three kills. We dish out just shy of 2,500. We don't bounce anything. 
but we had a good time. And that's the main thing about these type of tanks. You're meant to go out there and have a bit of fun. We get a first class for our troubles, and I'm very happy with that, considering it was a tier eight game. So, you know, don't write this one off. And it's no surprise to me now when I look at it a little bit deeper why this tank is the best light tank in tier seven. So that's the light tank. Let's move across now to the medium tank. Jumping into the medium tanks, it was a little bit of a surprise to me to see this one, the T-43, the USSR medium. I really thought it would be something along the lines of the Comet. Now the T-43 has qualifying battles of 824 with a win rate of 51.68%. Contrast that with number two, which is the T-34-1, the Chinese medium, that has qualifying battles of 270 with a 51.67% win rate. Finally, we then have the Comet at 647 qualifying battles with only a 49.75% win rate. However, the T-34 has much better damage per battle at 1,050 than this tank, which only has 981. Contrast that with the Comet, which I thought would really be up there. Number one is only 930. Four. What is it that makes this tank so good? Here we are rolling out on Faust, and this time we're not bottom tier. We're sort of we're actually top tier. Now the thing about this tank is it has pretty decent DPM. It's only beaten by the Comet. This thing has 2,740, whereas the Comet has 2,849. It has pretty decent penetration. By no means the best, but it's average at 152 mil. It has pretty decent alpha damage at 200. It gains not the best. Think of along the lines of the T-34-1, which is number two. That has 280, but it has a great rate of fire. Again, it's beaten by the likes of the Comet and the Panther, but at 13.7 rounds a minute, it's not bad. It has a 4.38 second reload. Again, that beaten by the Panther and the Comet. It has pretty decent shell velocity. In fact, it has the best shell velocity, I think, in the tier. Yes, it does at 950. It has a pretty decent aim time at just over two seconds. And it has eight degrees of gun depression. Now that may not seem a lot, but it's enough for this tank. It is pretty quite and small. Okay, the Leo and the Comet absolutely beat it hands down with the Comet with 12 degrees. It's got pretty decent speed. Not as fast as the Panther, not as fast as the VK-30, and certainly not as fast as a Comet. But at 51 kilometers an hour, it's not too bad. And it has a pretty half decent camo rating, better than the Comet. This is 26% standing still, 20% moving forward, and only 6% stationary after you fired. Now contrast that to the, uh, to the Comet, which is 25, 19, and 6. You can see that this one is just edging it a little bit out there. I like this tank. I think this tank is amazing. You can really, like the LTG, throw this thing around the battlefield. And you're not going to struggle to pen virtually anything in tier 6 or tier 7. You may start to struggle in some of the tier 8, especially some of the big heavy tanks. But the mobility of this one allows you to get around the battlefield nicely and get yourself into some decent positions. Its dispersion isn't that bad either. It's it's pretty good. Okay, the Comet and likes like that beat it, but it's not the worst in the tier. So you can realistically snipe in this thing. You can do play like a Leo. And again, it's a pretty noob-friendly tank. I mean, if those people are used to the T-34 variants, then this one is equally as good. And we saw in the last video on the tier sixes that the T-34-85 is the best tech tree medium in the tier. And this is no different for the very same reasons. Now we've knocked out 2,326 here. We've taken three kills. We've bounced 160. Unfortunately, they, they keep saying he's AFK and he is. He wasn't AFK, but he went. So I'm gonna get some free farm there. Uh, farming done here which is quite nice to be honest with you and um, fair play to the enemy team for, uh, for you know pointing all this out because we could have been rolling around the back the the, the the map for eternity looking for this guy so there he is bless him he is a t26 e3 eagle pretty decent tank they could have done with him he obviously wasn't afk he obviously started the game mobile but uh, we're gonna get some um we're gonna get some free damage basically and uh, 
this one was number three in the Hall of Fame. I did have another battle, but it was a loss, and that was number one in the Hall of Fame. And I did these on stream, so it's no longer number one in the Hall of Fame, however, it's now number two. But we, we're going to dish out some decent damage, mainly because of this AFK. But this tech can do that. So we end up with 3,367 damage, we take four kills, we bounce 160, and we will get a nice little golden M for our troubles there. But like I said, I have got another video on this one, another replay, whereby it wasn't an AFK. It was pure farming. It, was an, it wasn't a mastery AR. It was only a first class. But it was 3,600 damage or something. So this tank has the ability to do that. And it has the ability to do that in a noob-friendly way. So that's the light and that's the medium. What about the heavy tank? Well, it was no surprise to me, but apparently the best tech tree heavy in tier 7 is that of the Tiger P the German heavy tank. Now this one has 814 qualifying battles with a 52.24% win rate and a, D and a damage per battle of 1,135. Now contrast that to the Tiger 1, which has 1,238 battles and only a 50% win rate and only a damage per battle of 1,068. Obviously number two and number three is T29 and Black Prince respectively. The T29 has 51 0.82% win rate and the Black Prince at 51.17. But interestingly, this Tiger P has the best damage per battle than all the other tech tree heavies. Now it's no surprise to me because I absolutely love this tank, but what is surprising to me is that the Tiger one is so low on the list. And the reason I'm surprised is because the DPM, the penetration, the alpha damage, the rate of fire, the reload, the caliber, and even the shell velocity is exactly the same. Now the DPM on the Tiger P is the best, so sorry, one of the best in the tier. The Black Prince takes that moniker, what with its DPM of 3000, but this has 2411, and remember it's exactly the same as the Tiger 1. It has pretty decent penetration, in fact the penetration is the best in the tier with 203 millimeters. It has pretty decent rate of fire. It will fire 10.96 shells a minute, which is pretty, pretty good. Okay, the Black Prince outclasses it there, but hey, that's a Black Prince. It has a reload time of 5.47 seconds. Again, only the Black Prince is beating it. And it has a shell velocity of 1,000, which is the best in the tier. But the Gurn is exactly the same as that of the Tiger 1. So how is the Tiger 1 so low? Aim time, 2.63 seconds. Not the best, but by far not the worst. It has a pretty decent dispersion. It has relatively good depression. The Tiger 1 actually has better depression at 7%. It is slower than the Tiger 1. This one, this one will knock out 35 kilometers in the hour, whereas the Tiger 1 is 44 kilometers. And it has a, it, 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 but it does have a better camo rating at 12%. Compare that to the Tiger one at only 11%. So what is it about this one? Well, the main thing about this one is that I just find it a lot easier to play than that of the Tiger one. Even though the Tiger one has better armor, even though the Tiger one on paper is a much better tank, I just find this one just that little bit better and I don't know why because it makes no sense to me to be perfectly honest with you thing is I love both the Tiger 1 and the Tiger P but I do have a soft spot for the Tiger P the thing is back in the day the Tiger P always outshone the Tiger 1 and then the Tiger 1 got a bit of a buff by Wargaming and then the Tiger P kind of lost its little moniker but you can see here it's quite easy to churn out over 2k damage in this thing admittedly we are in a decent game here, tier eight, tier seven. But it's pretty easy to knock out that damage. It's pretty easy to get those kills. And it's no surprise to me that its damage per battle is so high. I'm still confused as to why the Tiger one is so low, however. So that's the Tiger P. It's an absolutely fantastic tank. I find it very noob friendly. I find it very forgiving and I absolutely adore it. So if you haven't been out in the Tiger P for a while, dust it off, you'll have some great fun in it. And yeah, I'm, I'm still pretty confused why the Tiger 1 is performing so badly. Maybe it's because it's had more games. 
So enough, we've done the lights, we've done the mediums, we've now done the heavies. What is the best TD in tier seven? Well, I must admit this one did take me by a bit of surprise. I really thought it would be something along the G2 to SPG line, but it isn't. It's the Simo Vente Contra Caro Mod 1956. That is apparently the best tier seven tech tree TD. Okay, it only has 70 qualifying battles, but it does have a 52.93% win rate and it has a damage per battle of 1,148. Now the G2 SPG has 164 qualifying battles and a 52.67% win rate with a damage per battle of 1,192. And nipping closely behind all of those heels is the SU-152 with a qualifying battles of 1,482, a win rate of 52.13, and a damage per battle of 1,135. So as you can see, I mean, the Sima Vente is not dishing out as much damage as the G2 SPG. So what is it about this tank? What makes this tank the best current TD in the tech tree? Now, I was pretty shocked when this one came up as number one, because on paper, it ain't good. And I'm thinking that the only reason it's up there is because it's only got 70 qualifying battles. Its DPM is not the best. Its penetration is not the best. Its alpha damage is not the best. Its rate of fire is not the best. Its reload time is not the best. And the shell velocity is not the best. Virtually all the other TDs beat it hands down. Its aim time is pretty bad. Its dispersion is pretty bad. Its gun depression is terrible. Its aiming arc is okay. Its speed, pretty bad. Its camo profile, not bad, but not the best. And its armor, that is the only thing that really outshines all the other TDs in the tier. Aside from that, all the other TDs on paper, as I say, are much better than this thing. But the frontal armor on this one at a whopping 250 millimeters on the front of the turret and 210 on its plate, on its hull, just blows everything else away. And I think that's the problem with the tank. People are struggling to pen it. People are struggling to combat it. And when you've got a longish reload, when you've got not the best penetration and not the best this and not the best that, it doesn't really matter if you've got stonking armor. And this one realistically doesn't surprise me when I look at it that way. By far not the easiest TD to get on with, I must admit. You know, it's slow, it's cumbersome, and it's it's just not the best. But front line in it, stick that front in front of anything, and they're gonna struggle to pen you, even with Pramo in some instances. And that is the thing about this tank. And it's it's sort of changing everything in that respect. Players are playing it to its strengths. And if you play it to its strengths, you're gonna win because people are gonna struggle to sort of combat you. I am thinking that at some time in the near distant future, Wargaming will tinker with that uh, armor profile because it's just too strong, realistically. Uh, frontally, it's just too strong. And they will probably tinker with it, I don't know. They may not reduce the armor, they may not reduce the hit points, they may just make it a little bit slower or something like that. But they'll do something to it, because at this moment in time, a lot of people are struggling to combat this thing. Now this is a tier eight game, again, we are bottom tier. And we're rolling out, we're already dished out four kills. There you go, to kill number five. We only did 1400 damage, just shy of 1500. But boy, what a game. And that's what you can do in this thing. And you will see that people are really going to struggle to pen you. And that is why this tank is up there. Simple as that. There are better TDs, I admit, gun-wise, but there's nothing better armor-wise. So that is the SMV CC56. As you can see, we didn't even do the top damage yet. We get a first class. So that has been my look at the best tech tree tier sevens that you can get the LTG, the T43, the Tiger P and the Sermavente Contracaro 56 all amazing tanks and if you haven't played them for a while 
by all means go out there dust them off see what you can do in them because you will have some fun they're not as bad as people think and you know what they can even handle themselves against smashers and annihilators anyway i've been fujit that has been the best tier sevens from light all the way through to td i'd love to hear your thoughts on this so comment below because that's what the comments are for and until the next time guys stay safe out there have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking because at the end of the day that really is what it's all about having fun and being happy